Now when doing experiments, I like to get as much as I can set up ahead of time. So when I'm ready to conduct the experiment, everything is ready to go. So I've done that here and I'm just going to go over some of what I have to give you a sense of how I've gotten ready and, and, the, and all the equipment I'm using. So once again, we're looking at different sewing rates. So if I had a ton of space, I might do a tray, a full 1020 tray at each different sewing rate, but I don't have that space. And actually, in essence, it's a bit of a waste of space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do little cell packs. So I'm going to do them in a 1020 tray, but in the cell in the 1020 tray, I have 12 different cell packs. So this means I can have 12 different sewing weights right here. So what I've done is I've gotten my trays ready. This is my, uh, I think it's my wheatgrass. Uh, well, it's either my wheatgrass or my sunflower. One of them, doesn't really matter. So what's gonna happen here is each of these cell packs is gonna get a different sewing rate. And I'm gonna do this experiment twice. So replicates are really important. And within each of these trays, once I sew them, because these are in order of, of uh, weights, that are gonna go in them. And they're in order in the sense that they're all labeled. They all have the weight in grams of seed that is gonna go in each one. So that'll make seeding really easy. So what I'll do is I'll go through and seed each of these trays, but then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to randomize the cells in here. That way uh, I'm not getting you know stuff at the front doing better than stuff at the back where it's maybe warmer or there's more light. So it, it totally randomizes um, the, the layout and that's an important aspect of experimentation is randomizing order. If all the heavily seated ones are in the front and all the, the lightly seated ones are in the back, it's hard to tell if something else is, is affecting growth. So by mixing them up, we can kind of eliminate that. So as I showed you, I've got each of the cell packs labeled. So each of them has the uh, number of grams of seed that need to go in each one. Now, my scale only goes to the gram so I'll have to do a little bit of tweaking to get the, the points, which will just be adding, you know, a seed at a time in, in essence. But I'm not doing, you know, Nobel research here. What I'm just trying to do is get a sense of what these different sewing rates look like and what they do. So these are prepped. And then I also have uh, another set of cell packs prepped that are going to sit on top of these. Now, typically, I just put another 1020 tray over top of, of a growing tray and then put a, a concrete block on that for weight. Now, if I do that here and each of these trays is, is pushing up at a different rate, then each tray is going to affect the other one. So by having individual cell packs right on top, they're going to be able to independently put up, push up the weight and not be as affected by the neighboring uh, sewing. So what I'll do is I'll put those weights on top. They'll basically be cell packs with water and soil. So they'll be way about a pound to a pound and a half. And then over that, I'll put another mesh tray that's just gonna sort of hold it all together. So it'll be pretty basic and we'll take a look at that when it's there. So basically my trays are ready to go and to be sewed. The, the other big aspect of this is I need to soak 24 individual containers of seed. So I have multiple uh, glass jars and containers, coffee mugs from around the house. I have 24 of each and my scale is right here. So what I'm going to do is for each one I'm going to weigh out the the equivalent amount of seed. So for this one it would be 6.2 grams of seed. I'm going to put the seed in there and then I'm going to put it here. And I'm going to do this with all these jars. So this jar is for this cell pack, this jar is for this cell pack, this jar is for this cell pack. I'm going to be very meticulous about this stuff because if I make a mistake, I don't know what uh, what sewing rate is what. I don't know what jar goes with what cell pack. Once I've done all the jars on all these trays, then I'm going to add water to each of these jars. So we're going to have all the, the jars there. They're going to be sitting in water and they're all going to soak for an hour. After an hour, I'm going to take the seed out. I'm going to I'm going to rinse it uh, so we get the uh, we get the water out of there and then I'm going to put it on top of the uh, soil and then that jar gets put off to the side. So then I can go through each one and I'm only ever working on one cell pack at a time on one tray at a time on one crop at a time. And by doing that, I'm really reducing the risk of error. Now, if I was being even more meticulous, I'd put a label on each of these jars, which is probably what I would do if I was working in a lab but I don't have extra jars and extra labels everywhere. 
In fact, the labels I used here are reused labels from another project that uh, had too many labels. But this will do fairly well, so it's going to get everything in order. Now I've also got my space cleared out here for where uh, the experiments are going to take place. My two trays of sunflower are going to go here, my replicates. Uh, these are going to go on the heating pads, and the heating pads are going to be on uh, 12 hours a day, which is detailed in the methods. And then the wheatgrass is going to go up here, which does not need the heating pad. Keep in mind, we're not comparing the wheatgrass germination to the sunflower germination, so the fact that one has a heating pad and one doesn't makes no difference. We're comparing them to each other. I'm comparing the two wheatgrass to each other. I'm comparing the two sunflower to each other. So they're in different conditions, but they're consistent. So once those are up there, um, I will, um, actually, even before that, once I've done my sewing and I've randomized them, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a map. I'm going to put that in my spreadsheet. I'm going to do that in case some of these labels, for some reason, uh, get damaged or things rub off. Uh, and, and so, yeah, I want to make sure that I've got a backup version for some reason if, if the labels don't work. Uh, so that's kind of an overview of how that's going to look. It's going to take a while, uh, so I sort of do it with other tasks throughout the morning. Uh, it's evening right now, so I'm getting this stuff all prepped, so when morning comes, it's ready to go. Now the reason I want to start these in the morning, and the reason why I like to do start all my crops in the morning, is because I want to take, I want the first day of growth to be a full day. So when I know, you know, Monday is day one, it's had a full day of growth. And Tuesday being t day two, it's a full day Tuesday. So I, I, that really helps me. And I sometimes get a little confused when I, when I sew in the evening and then I'm trying to figure out what day it is. So yeah, by sewing on Monday, Monday's day one, that's a full day of growth. So it really helps keep track of that. Uh, because I'll know my times, I'll know by the hour as well, but I tend to do stuff at similar times within the day. So an hour here or there isn't gonna make too much difference uh, over the course of a week or eight days. So that is our experiment set up and ready to go. Uh, I'm gonna do a bit more prep today just to make sure everything is good to go. And then uh, we'll start with the actual soaking of the seeds and getting things going.